Next up, uh, as I said earlier, is Pawn and Pong. Now you might think this is a bit of a dirty book. I mean, just uh, I'm not allowed to show stuff like that. <laughs> but just looking at the centre pages, you've got a few colour pictures, uh, so on and so forth. And I think the the idea behind the book was simply uh, I don't know why I'm showing you all the rude bits. I suppose it's probably to keep you interested. The idea about it was. Uh, you would think it would look at the sex industry and how it's, and game industry how it's evolved from um, right back in the days of the Atari 2600s, uh, like a particular game just I showed you there before, which was uh, Custer's Revenge. Um, there's quite a lot of, of interesting background you would think behind that game and 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 how other companies caught on and and, and, and developed the concept of uh, sex and video games, but. The problem with the book, with the book, and this is something I'm a bit disappointed with Retro Gamer actually for recommending, is it just doesn't go into enough detail. There's not enough background. The guy doesn't really seem to have done his research. He just he briefly touches upon uh, what certain companies have done, what games were released, so on and so forth. But I mean, I'm not one for buying uh, all, all these sort of dodgy games and so on. Uh, uh, well, obviously not, because I've only been a kid at the time. <laughs> But uh, even was I mean even was I heard about or knew about at the time like the strip strip poker series. I mean, God knows how many games of them there were. But I, I believe at the, at the time and for several years they were actually quite popular and quite good sellers. But there's no mention of them. You know what I mean? I I I I think they influenced uh, a lot of the later series to do with like uh, old like Playboy and all magazines and things like that. But there's just no no touch on it and it's just a very very disappointing book it's just too brief doesn't touch enough I mean compared to the next one I'm about to show you it's just uh, it's a bit of a waste of time and I just can't recommend it it cost me about eight or nine quid honestly just just don't bother uh, again you might think oh it's a bit dirty it'd be a bit fun to read but it's just not it, it, it goes for the very very um, Cheap look at some of the games such as uh, like Grand Theft Auto, the things with the prostitutes and the, the hot coffee mod, and it touches on them briefly and, and how they would have affected the game selling at the time. But it's all very very obvious stuff. There's there's no detail, there's no background to it, and a very disappointing book, I'm afraid. But yeah, moving on to my last book, the Ultimate History of Video Games. <clears throat> And I'm going to say this now, this is probably the greatest gaming book I have ever read, or I could possibly ever be about games. It is, it's supposed to be, in a way, it's supposed to be very factual and, 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 and lead you through the points. But it is so, so well written. It does the complete history of video games from about, well, 77, 76, when Nolan Bushel from Atari began the industry, as it were and takes up to about the release of the Xbox in 2001, which is roughly when it was published. So it's not too current. But the thing is, again, it's it's so well written. The first third for a book is all about Nolan Bushel and Atari, you know, how they, they, they rose astronomically and then just died on their asses basically. But it's such a gripping read because, you know, again, this is a guy who's done his research, he's talked to the people, he's talked to like uh, people in advertising, um, programmers, development, you know, pe right, people right down to the factory floor. And uh, like one of the uh, funny things about Atari's history, is especially, is uh, all the talk about all the drugs being smoked on ground and the orgies and the parties and all dodgy stuff like that going on. And it's even touched in the book and it's just quite interesting to see what, what the, the uh, perspective of certain people was at the time. Uh, and of course, after, after the Atari, Atari bit, it goes. It does touch on the Nintendo and the, the Sega War, as it were, for, for the next, from about well, it would have been about eighty-five to about ninety-five, and then it sort of the, the book goes down a bit there because it starts to talk about the uh, the Saturn and the Dreamcast and so on, and, and their downfall in a way. Uh, and that, but that's not the fault of the author <clears throat> because I think by this time in in the industry's life, it was all becoming like. Um, big corporations, you know, there wasn't really much interest of happening behind the scenes, but the, like I say, the first third of the book, it was, it was just so interesting and exciting to read. The middle, middle third wasn't as great, but it was very, very informative, and the last third, yeah, it's alright, it was a nice finish, but I suppose the great thing about it is right at the end, it starts talking about what, what, 
what the games industry can look forward to with, uh, with like the PlayStation 2 coming out, the GameCube, and of course Microsoft stepping into it. And actually there's a very, very interesting uh, couple of chapters at the bar that talk about how uh, a couple of like engineers at Microsoft got together and, and you know, just came up with, with, um, with the Xbox, completely like, you know, completely uh, separate to all the other Windows stuff, and, and it just makes for a very, very interesting read. And honestly, I just ca cannot recommend this recommend it enough. So uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I hope I'm not bored you with <laughs> with that too much. It just, like I said, there was just a few books I just wanted you to have a look at. As I said, Ultimate History. Don't bother. <laughs> Game over. Bother. And definitely bother vintage games. They're all, um, well, besides Pong Pong, they're all very good books, quite enjoyable. Uh, like I say it's taken me uh, a month or two to uh, read through them, and, and I've actually got a couple more waiting to, to be read. But yeah, if, if you've got a few quid knocking around, or a few dollars, whatever, sat, sat around in your bank, then you can't go wrong picking up these books. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will do my best to post another video soon.